Okay, today we're going to do a European on a really nice black South Dakota Black Hills white tail. First thing is, do a European. Make sure you have a sharp knife. We're going to get rid of the neck, the ears. First thing we're going to do is we're going to completely cut these ears off. We're going to get rid of any excess meat we have. Good sharp knife helps in this point. Cut through the throat area. I always just stand it up. Start cutting. It takes some practice to learn where to cut, but you got to sever the neck off with the spine right on the back of the head, right at the joint. Be very carefully, and it takes practice to do this. It'll break right away. Right there is the joint of the spine. There, that's the ears and the neck gone. Now all we have is the head. Now if it came from a locker plant or it's properly skinned, it may have been that way already. Now we're going to remove the bottom jaw, being careful not to cut our arms. Never cross and cut with your arm there. I've seen that mistake done with a knife through the arm. Always keep your hand holding the horns away from the knife deal. Start at the corner of the mouth and just cut back through the skin on that side. This side we're going to do the opposite. We're going to go from the back and, and aim towards that corner of that mouth. We're going to make sure that's all cut loose. Skin's all broke. Now I like to use a towel for this part. I've got all the skin cut through. I'm going to try to break that bottom jaw away. I'll lay it on the edge of the table like so. And I'll take my hand. I'll just work that bottom jaw away. I'll hold on to the top jaw. You can use gloves if you need. I, I use a towel. And just take a little strength. And if it was properly cut, it'll break away. I missed a spot there. Now that I got opened up, I can see those spots. That bottom jaw will just break over. You can sever the bottom jaw off. And all we have, now we're not, we're not doing the bottom jaw on this European. If you're doing the bottom jaw, you would have had to boil that off. Remove all the hair. We don't want the bottom jaw. We're just doing the upper upper part of this skull today. Now we're going to make the cut with a good sharp knife, the same as if we were caping this deer. And if you go to our website, huntedtrophies.com, you'll see how to cape a deer properly. Um, we're just going to start just like we'd cape a deer right at the horn burr. We'll cut our V back. We'll do from the opposite side. We'll come match that V. Now we're just going to start going forward and we have to remove all this hair right up underneath the burr. And as I said, I'm going to use the same techniques doing this as I would do caping my deer. But your goal is at this point, get every bit of height and hair off of this skull. Right now I'm just using a screwdriver to get around that horn burr. We're just going to skin this off. It, it isn't completely like caping a deer because you've got, you don't have to worry about cutting the eyelids and that part because you're not saving this skin. It's very important to get all the hair off right up under them burrs too because that, that's the spot where the water really doesn't hit is in burrs because we don't want to put those burrs down in the water when we're boiling it because we don't want to discolor them so in our shop we do 150 200 europeans a year i don't like to boil any color off my horn so i'm very careful about my boiling process when it comes to horns i don't like discolored horns i don't like to wash my horns if there's blood on them, I'll take it off. 
but we'll use knives, scalpels, whatever it takes to completely get this hair and hide off this skull. Always remember the fresher that the skull is, the easier it's going to clean up, the easier it's going to boil. Don't, don't leave this skull lay around for a month or two and then expect to have an easy job of boiling it. If you're going to leave it lay around for a month or two, get it in the freezer, strip the skin off before you put it in the freezer, then wrap it good in a plastic bag, get it in the freezer because it'll boil better, it'll boil easier, cleaner, and you'll have a better finished product the sooner you do it or the fresher it is. Right now that skull is ready to boil. We've got all the hair, all the skin removed. At this point, I, use, I like to use a 12 inch wide heavy duty aluminum foil. I'll rip off about a 30 inch, two 30 inch to 36 inch pieces. If my box will let me. There's the two pieces of foil I'm going to need. I'll lay the shiny side down. I'm going to fold this, just roll this in the third. I'm going to fold it twice. So I'm down to about four inches in width. I'm going to take this foil and I'm very carefully going to stay probably an eighth of an inch below this burr at the most. I'm going to go around this burr two or three times. Once I get around it a couple, two, three times, then I'm going to go up the side of the horns a little bit. I want it to be up them horns about eight inches. Then I'm going to squeeze that really tight. That eighth inch I left below, I'm going to push up under the burrs. So none of my burrs will show, but yet all my pedicle on my skull is going to show so that the steam and the heat can get to it. Now this is shiny side out. You press that tight into that horn so that your water and your steam doesn't get up underneath that horn and discolor it. I'm going to repeat that process with the opposite horn. two or three times around it, the more the better, and then work up the horn so you don't steam any color off your horn all the way up because that steam will come up and take this color of that horn. What this aluminum foil is doing is protecting the color of your horn. I've seen people completely drop their horns right in the water then they paint it back about four inches of horn. Now nothing looks worse than a discolored horn painted back because I don't care how good you are, you can't match Mother Nature. See that foil pushed up good and tight under there. Okay, now this skull is ready to go in our boiling pot. We'll move it to the boiling pot next. But always remember, your heaviest meat is right in here on the skull. Your brain cavity, all your brains, your heaviest meat is right through the eye socket. Your weakest part of the skull and the part that's going to fall apart, the teeth will come out fast, and this front nose piece. Now I've seen videos of people, and I've seen people actually take the skull, drop the whole thing down in the water, and then they glue all the teeth back in and glue all these pieces back together. That's unnecessary. Done properly, we will not lose any teeth, we will not lose any nose plates, and we'll have a nice clean skull when we're done. When we put this in the water first, we're going to drop it in. We've got our pan built to the size it's that we can drop it in and keep the nose piece out. We'll run the water right straight halfway through the eye and in this area. And we're going to boil this all off first. When this is 95% clean, we'll drop the rest of this down in and clean the rest of it. At this point, we're going to move it to the boiling pot. Now we're going to proceed with boiling the skull out. We've got a pot that measures 9 inches inside by 13 inches by 6.5 inches. 
I found this to be the perfect size pot for boiling deer and antelope skulls. I can do two skulls in there at one time when I've got them on hand. Today we're just going to do one for training purposes. But we get water in there, we use a heat source that'll just bring this to a real light boil. We don't want a strong rolling boil because we'll boil the skulls apart. A real light boil will, we can finish a deer skull in approximately four hours without it falling apart in any, in any manner. Um, we use a product called Arm & Hammer Super Washing Soda. I use about 12 ounces of that in the pot this size. I'll just pour that in. Right now my water's not boiling yet. I just started the fire. Um, I like to put the skull in as it's coming to a boil. It just starts cleaning it. But I'm going to set this skull in as you can see, the water is halfway up on the eyeballs on this skull right now. That keeps the majority, it keeps the most of the heat off the front teeth. Actually, I'm going to turn this the other way and keep the front teeth out a little farther and come right to the bottom of the eyeballs. I don't want them front teeth to boil out of the skull. They're the easiest ones to come out of the front ones. But this will sit in this pot now while it comes to a boil. Once it's boiling, it'll be probably 45 minutes to an hour for the first time we take it out and start cleaning it but at this point we're just going to let this water heat up and boil hey, as you can see this skull has been in the water on boiling water for about 45 minutes the meat's turning to a gel state is when it'll start to come off good that's the important part is remembering to put your armor hammer washing soda in. It's what helps turn it to gel. My first step, I like to take the eardrums out. So I got a big screwdriver. And right there is the eardrum. Popped right out of where the eardrum is. Second eardrum's on this side right here. So I'm just going to take the screwdriver, work that in there, pop that eardrum. Just continue to scrape and pull the chunks, big chunks of meat away. Make sure on the back of the skull here, this is the hardest, one of the hardest spots to boil off clean on the skull is where the neck connected. First time out, you want to get that clean. First time out now, you're not going to get the skull real clean. You're just going to get rid of the big chunks of meat with a knife, screwdriver, whatever it takes. You're going to get rid of these big chunks of meat. So when we go back to the water for the next time, we have room to move the water through and get it closer to the skull. But the more of this meat that comes off this time, and we don't want to spend a lot of time at this point. We just want to break them big chunks away. Try to remove the eyeballs at this time. I'll take a knife, sharp knife and I'll just cut around the eyeball. Usually I would suggest you don't talk or keep your mouth open while you're doing this. That eyeball has a tendency of wanting to break. But I'll just work around both eyeballs. Cutting them loose. Then I have a pair of eight inch forceps. And I'll just take that and I'll hook onto that eyeball. And I'll either push it through the back, just move it around until I can pull it out, back and forth a little. What that's doing is it's, it's breaking that tendon loose, going into the brain cavity where the nerves attach. And that's gonna give us one more hole for this water to work through. I'm in a sink. I like to do this in a sink where I have warm or hot water to work with. I'll keep this garbage cleaned up out of the bottom of the sink so it doesn't plug the drain. But the next step is I'm going to start running hot water 
into that brain cavity. I'm going to take my forceps and I'm going to dig them brains out of that brain cavity. You can see they just kind of turn to mush at this point. But they'll just work them forceps, pull them out, run water in so often it'll turn them into kind of a soupy material and they'll wash right out that. But this is a very important step the first time because this will allow water up inside that brain cavity, hot water, boiling water, and it'll help heat that meat. That meat's just like cooking anything. The more done it gets, the hotter it gets, the faster it comes off that bone. But you got to give it access to get to that bone and into that deep into that meat tissue. Very lightly hit it on the back. There, most of the brains are out now. The water is going to go into there. It's going to flow through. You might want to scrape a little more of that meat off the bigger chunks yet. The more that's loosened up this time, the better this will boil. And the shorter time you have to boil it, the shorter time you boil this horn or this bone. The better shape the skull will be in when it's finished. You know, you always hear people talking about skulls being brittle and boiling apart and breaking. That's just because they boil them too hot and too long. Keep this at a minimum boil. Clean it every so often. Right now we've got the majority off that's going to come off this time. We're going to go put this back in the water the same way we had it. We're going to keep the Keep working on the back side. We'll leave the whole facial part intact yet, but we're going to put it in for another half hour or so. We'll check it periodically to see how it looks, but it's going to have gel more and we'll be able to tell when it's going to pull right off for us. So back to the boiling pot we're going to go. Skull's been back in the water for another hour. We removed it. You can see the stuff's really gel. Gel, the majority of it should scrape right off now with the use of hot water and a knife. As I said, I like to do it in the sink where there's hot water. If you don't have that capability, keep some hot water in a pan and just, you know, if you're doing it in the shop, you're going to have hot water. If you're running a taxidermy shop, if you're just doing this at home as a do it yourself project, just keep some hot water in a pan that you can dip it in. Just keeping this warm will keep this stuff from gelling back up and sticking. But it's really nice if you can have a hose or a water, hot water to run through that brain cavity. It will help this process a lot. Washing them brains out and washing through that cavity. be able to just put this in the water and boil it off and have everything fall right off. It's not that simple. You got to keep working and pulling all the all the meat off, all the meat out of all the holes. See it keeps coming out of that brain cavity. If you ever 
tapping on something, tapping lightly. I have tapped these apart before by tapping too heavy. I've had help. That's the problem with training help. You know, you always make your mistakes early and early on in your careers and you know, just practice on these. Get a few of them even if you don't want them. Do it, you'll get better at it as you do it. done this in their house only to say they would never do it in there again because the smell of the boiling skulls gets in everything in the house. So make sure you keep it outdoors, in a garage, in a shed. I suppose if you're not married it might be okay to do it in the house but you wouldn't want to live with the smell that's going to be there for quite a while in everything that's in your house. I actually do it in the back boil in the part in the back part of my shop. Keep the smell out of my mouth. Well, we're gonna go put this back in the water again. This time we're gonna drop it all the way. In the boiling pot. So that the rest of it gets loose up in the nose and the face area. We've got the back cleaned off enough now that this next step should finish the rest of it. It'll probably take another 45 minutes in the boiling pot. We're now going to put this in the boiling pot for the final stages. As you can see the water is right up to the bottom of the horn burrs. It's actually over the horn burrs in the back a little bit because of the shape of the skull. You can't get it perfect. But you want just a, we probably got a quarter inch of water over the top of the skull plate. We're going to keep it at that point for the next 45 minutes. You can see the bubbles starting to work already. That means it's soaping up. It's already doing its job in there. As I said, another 40, 45 minutes. We'll pull that out and take a look at it. And See where we're at. If you have problems remembering things, set a timer because you do not at this point want to leave that in any more than 40 to 45 minutes. As you can see, we just pulled the skull out again. It's been about 40 minutes. You can see this nose piece is starting to loosen up completely, but be very careful in pulling these pieces off the nose so you don't break them nose plates apart. Don't just grab it and pull it off. It will pull them nose plates apart on you. I use my forceps. I actually grab the septum inside the nose and I push forward first, and then pull out, hope, hoping it breaks it off, off up in there, like it did. At this point, I'm just gonna use my knife and hot water again. This is gonna be completely clean after this time, so I'm gonna get rid of the Tin foil at this time so I can get right up underneath them horn burrs because I'm sure there's a little bit up in there yet to scrape off. It should have heated up in the heating process enough to scrape it off. At this point your horns will look a little discolored because they're actually wet under there but they should dry just fine. As long as the soap and the water didn't get up in there too strong. But as I said, now I'm just going to spend the next 10 minutes or so, whatever it takes, carefully getting and working every, every bit of tenon, every bit of meat I can off of the skull. I'll scrape it first. I use hot water.
as you can see, you probably don't want to use your good knife for scraping. I just use an old broken knife that I have laying around the shop. I'm just using it to scrape off. It doesn't have to be sharp. Try to pick out all them little pieces that are holding on up in the cavities. nostril cavity here, trying to wash the parts on, out that are hanging in the septum area of the nose. I like to leave all that nice septum and nostril in there. I'll run the water down, I'll just tap lightly on the horns, trying to get that stuff to feed out of there in time. I'm picking out everything I see, scraping it off carefully. Just a little hand brush, sometimes run over, it'll take some of the little Klingons off. Right now we've got a nice clean solid skull, teeth are solid, nose plates are solid, no discoloration of the horns, all the meat's gone off of it. At this point we're ready to go put our bleach on it and bleach the skull and get it ready for the final finish. Okay, for this step, for bleaching, we'll mix our bleach up in just a plastic container. We use a 40 volume peroxide. I use the cream, cream developer peroxide. It's, it's a little thicker, so it, it paints on and pastes on a little better. We use a product called Basic White um, Bleach. It's just a hair bleach. It can be bought at your beauty supply house or from your hairdresser, online from some of the supply catalog, but we're going to start with probably just two, three ounces of cream developer. We'll pour that in. Let's 
go all this side, you're going to take about three ounces, take about two and a half to three scoops of bleach. We just want to make a paste out of it. That's all we're trying to make. Got our paste mixed up. It's fairly stiff. Make sure you use rubber gloves, vinyl gloves to protect your hands. This stuff's very caustic. It'll burn. It'll burn your skin. If you don't wash it off, if you get it on your skin or on the horns, make sure you clean it off. But very carefully go up under the horn burrs with it. Make sure you cover all parts of the skull good. This is what's going to bleach it and make it nice and white when it's finished. Don't get it, keep it off the horns if at all possible. Like I said, if you get it on the horns, doesn't take a very thick coat. Just got to get a little bit on it all. I'll take some, I'll let it work its way down that nasal cavity a little. We'll let this, I'll probably let this set for four to six hours, depending on the temp it's sitting in. I've left it overnight before and had okay luck with it. Um, you just have to figure out your temp and how much, you know, the warmer it is, the faster it's going to bleach, of course. Very carefully remove your glove. Lay everything aside so it stays you just let it bleach that way for a while, put it somewhere where it's safe and not going to get on anything, keep that bleach away from any other products in your shop. We've got a spot, we'll lay this to dry and then we'll rinse it off and we'll finish the skull. The next step on the European is we got to get the bleach off of the skull. Here again, I just use my sink. If you don't have access to a sink, you're going to need a hose, water, Preferably warm. In this step, that's probably not real important. But I'll, first step is I'll rinse the bleach, the majority of the bleach off. Then I'm going to use Dawn dishwashing liquid. I'm going to thoroughly rub that in wherever there was bleach. It takes the soap to neutralize the bleach so it doesn't keep eating the horn, eating the skull away later. You rub that bleach in good. Rinse your soap off. Now at this point, the skull's still very, it's got quite a bit of moisture in it, so I don't like to finish the skull yet. I like to leave it set in a warm area for a week to 10 days so that that bone dries out. So when I finish it, I know it's good and solid. So I'm gonna lay it aside and in a week to 10 days, I'll finish the skull and put the hanger on it. The skull is now ready to finish and put a hanger on it. I use a hanger from McKenzie. You can use an angle hanger. Some people use wire. I just like these hangers. I find they work good. I'm going to take my grinder. I'm going to cut these two points off and I'm also going to slot this spot right down in here so I can fill it with some kitty hair so I got a place to screw my hanger. point you can see my slot I've cut. I'm going to put a little piece of batting in there so I don't have to use as much kitty hair. This will help hold the kitty hair up in place. 
I'll put that in there. I use a product called Kitty Hair. It's a long strand fiberglass resin and matting mixed together. It doesn't take a lot of this. This this is just basically so that when I run my screw through my hanger, I get a good solid connection in there. I don't want to go through the bone and have that bone split and have my customers European end up on the floor someday because the bone split out. So we're just gonna mix this kitty hair up, put some hardener with it. I buy this at an auto body repair shop. I just find it easier than mixing the, cutting the matting up and mixing my own resin. I just buy it pre-done. I really don't think it's any more expensive. I'm just going to spoon that into, into that slot. It'll take 10 to 15 minutes for this to harden up for us to put the hanger on. So normally I do 10, 15 of these at a time and I just keep making my rounds until I had them all done. But today for training, we're just going to operate on one. So as soon as this is in there, now I've got a point. I've got some for one screw to go straight back in there. I can put a screw there and there. I'll have kitty hair behind all points. I'll take an old rag or an old towel. And I'll wipe that kitty hair off the back of that so that it doesn't show once it's dry. Now we're just going to play that aside for the next for 10 minutes until it sets up and then we'll put our hanger on it. We're now ready to put our hanger on. We're going to use a two and a half inch screw on the top. You have, you have to determine what length you're going to use. Actually two and a half wasn't long enough. We're going to switch to a three. We got to make sure we get it embedded in that fiberglass resin good enough to hold. I keep this hanger right up to the top of the skull as far as possible without going over the top. I don't want it seen later. Now I'm going to drive a screw in each side. You got three holes in. I'm going to put all three screws in. These screws I'm not going to drive in tight. I don't want them to twist my bracket, my hanger. I want it to stay good and square with the wall. So right now it's straight. It'll hook on good. We're going to wire brush these horns off a little. If there's anything on them that shouldn't be there. Every once in a while we touch them with something that we don't want, I don't clean horns up real good. I want them to look natural like when they were shot. Anything that got put in this shop or any blood I remove. That set, look, set looks good. The last step before calling the customer or putting this on the wall, whichever, is I use a super fish sealer. And I'm going to seal this skull up good. I'm not going to spray the horns. I'm just going to spray the skull with a good heavy coat to seal it. Should do this in an open air area. It's got a little, quite a bit of smell to it and it hangs around. I'll open the door when I'm done. Now you have to determine if you want a second coat on that. Sometimes I need a second coat. It all depends on how porous the bone is. We're gonna let that lay that aside and let it dry, but right now that skull's ready for the customer or for your wall, whichever you are doing it for.